Hello, my name is Christian Swenson. I do videos here on YouTube about autism, autistic consciousness, and life on the autism spectrum. And yes, I am still by the river. Um, just at the beginning here, I wanted to give a shout out to uh, OtCon, which is going to be presenting, which is going to be hosting a conference by autistic people for autistic people this Friday and Saturday in Provo, Utah. If you're around, I would love for you to drop by and meet me. I'm going to be presenting about autistic memoirs. It's going to be hosted by Scenic View Academy in Provo. It's going to be an LGBTQ panel. It's going to be a panel about um, how to be a great dungeon master, uh, a panel about how to survive, I mean, a presentation about the dungeon master thing, a panel about how to survive in college, lots of really great things. So, as you can see, there's not only a stream here, there's also a, a bunch of trees. Now, the cool thing about trees uh, is that uh, they're, they're very like us, aren't they? You know, if you ever took a, if you ever, I, I think I'm just going to walk home. <laughs> I'm going to walk home and film. Uh, come on, Muzi. Muzi. If you've ever seen, um, what is it? Uh, a, a picture of the human nervous system. Looks a lot like a tree, doesn't it? And this hasn't escaped. Uh, certain thinkers, certain observers of patterns, including myself. And, you know, because the human being really is a tree. And if you look at world mythologies and the, the founding stories of world religions, they often involve a tree, don't they? You know, like the tree of life and the tree of knowledge in the Garden of Eden story. There's the, what is there's the tree that, the, the Bodhi tree that the Buddha um, found enlightenment under. There's the Yggdrasil, the world's tree in Norse mythology. And uh, the Christmas tree, which derives from that. There's lots about the Christmas story, like at least the, the Germanic traditions that come from Norse mythology. You know, like Santa Claus is basically Odin, for instance. Um, and... Uh, you know, the reason I'm mentioning this is because, come on, Lucy. The reason I'm mentioning this is because in meditation lately and in the state of deep awareness that is between sleep and wakefulness, I've gotten a sense of my own, let's put it, my own nervous system. I don't know if this is my own imagination. Well, I mean, it is definitely, but I, I don't know if this has any, if this is a real perception of my own body, but it feels like it, right? My body feels like a tree. My body feels like a tree with roots, a tree with roots and branches. And here, where are the roots? Well, if you know anything about plants, you'll know that their reproductive organs, at least flowers' reproductive organs, are way up in the sky. And by analogy, you could say that we're kind of like an upside-down plant. Our roots are up here, and our reproductive organs are down there. <laughs> and uh, that, that's something that the book Plant Intelligence talks about. But, you know, you can kind of elaborate from that and think, you know... You know, like a lot of the structure of our brains is, is kind of like uh, the soil in a sense, right? It's kind of like you have more relevant structures going through more nutritive structures, I suppose. But I don't know. I'm not a neuroscientist. I just vaguely remember hearing about that some there, somewhere. Don't quote me. But in those moments, in those deep meditative moments, I can kind of almost feel my autism. And that's really the point of today's video, is that how does autism affect the, the brain tree, the body tree? And, you know, in those deep meditative states, I get the feeling, come on, Musi, and that actually I receive it as images, in a sense. They're like imaginative images pop up and they involve trees but they also involve other things and this is sounding weird but maybe you'll see what I mean in just a moment here's a really cool view isn't this a great view but the images are this 
I imagine looking at a tree, but the tree has icicles on it at the edge of the branches. And the icicles have fused together branches that are closer together than they should be. It has prevented them from developing in their own way because they are frozen together by this ice. And then the other image I have, I had this a few nights ago, is of, let's say that there is a ribbon of some kind, but not just one ribbon, more than a few. And the ribbons all want to be out and, and doing the swirly thing, but the ribbons are all brought into a, 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 a fastener. And so they're all fastened together and are acting like a single ribbon because they're all crammed together and then they have to spoon out. And another image that kind of explains the same thing is simply a knot. You know, a knot like the Gordian knot where lots of different strings are come together and they're all tangled together. And it kind of got me thinking that that's what my autism feels like. It feels like a knot. It feels like a tangled bush. It feels like branches of a tree stuck together by ice or something else. And, you know, you think about the neuroscience of the autistic brain, and that makes sense, right? We have too many connections. Connections that are sometimes helpful, but most, mostly unhelpful. We notice too much, and we notice the irrelevant, and it's hard not to notice. So we're kind of like a tangle, a knot of connections, of branches in this brain tree. Sorry, had to fix the the collar on my moose here um but uh you know it kind of got me thinking that that's you know that's what a, an autistic brain is is it's a tree that's gotten itself tangled up together in its branches and that's not necessarily a bad thing right you graft trees and you do all sorts of things to make connections where there aren't but I at least can see the appeal of pruning connections where there are. Right? And oftentimes I can feel the strain of that, of that, um, of that knot, that tangle of branches, because the different branches want to move in ways that the other branches won't let them. Let me show you this view here, because it's really beautiful. That's my valley right there. It's our valley. You can see the train, the lake, the canyon we're looking out of. Um, it's really, I'm really blessed to live so close to nature. Between a mountain and a lake. Yeah, so. Anyway, I was just thinking about that, you know? And. Oftentimes in meditation, I can feel that knot trying to untangle itself. I can feel the brain tree trying to elaborate its branches more freely. And it's frustrating to, to have all those tangles, but it does have its blessings sometimes. So anyway, remember to come to OtCon if you're, if you're around here. You're around here, and I'll talk to you later.